Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. I'm Norm from Tested. Norm, I have an iPad full of apps here, but it's not apps of the week. No, but we are still talking about iPad apps, specifically three of Adobe's new apps that came out today. Yeah. So these are Photoshop accessory apps. They're not standalone apps. What you do is you install these on the iPad, connect them to your installation of Photoshop CS5, and magic happens. Let's go to the couch, check it out right now. This app is called Easel. Easel? I know what an Easel is, but I, it's not spelled Whoa. like that. Those are all the instructions you're going to get. I hope you paid attention. All right, so you have basically an Easel with a Z, and you can draw on it. I'm going to draw. What should I draw on? Perfect circle. A perfect circle. That's the name of a band. Um, so how is this different from like Adobe Ideas? So the first thing that's different is there's a mod. Well, first off, it has a crazy gesture interface. Whoa. Yeah. So the, the, where your five fingers are yes. are where the menus are. Yes. And so, for example, if you want to change the color, that's yes. your... Uh, I lift oh, up everything but that finger. The index finger. Yes. Right. And then I drag over to the color that I want, either in the circle or just by picking one of my presets from my palette. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go with orange because I like orange. Okay. Going Nothing for a bright orange. It's the loneliest color. It is, though. And that's a little bit crazy Whoa, as you drew that's that line, a terrible orange line. example to show because it doesn't uh, really contrast. But look. It's spreading oh into the other goodness. colors. Yes. So it kind of does this weird watercolory modeling is what uh, Joey had suggested when he saw me playing with this earlier, testing it out. Um, you know, it as the paint dries, the watercolor, whatever the ink that I'm putting down here dries, it bleeds less. So, for example, this first circle I drew won't bleed at all, huh, whereas the, the most line. recent one, well, actually, well, the uh, yellow. So the orange bleeds orange. a little bit, yep. and something brand new. Uh, so if I change this to yellow, and then you is going to blue. bleed like crazy over yeah. the blue. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I can't really see people like I'm not an artist, so I shouldn't be judging this stuff. We well, can change the size um, of the yeah, brush. Yeah, change the size Massive. of the brush. Whoa, Whoa, there goes a lot of bleeding. Uh, you can change the opacity. So if you look, More the opaque. circle is getting darker Increase or lighter. Opaqueness. I'm going to change back to a different color. How about a purple, perhaps? Hmm. Uh, Whoa, oh, that bleeding is a everywhere. crazy effect. Also, performance not so hot. It's a uh, little slow. Because it's doing all this crazy watercolor model. Um, the other thing is, it doesn't have like full step back, step forward that you're used to from mm -hmm. Photoshop. However, it is marginally connected to Photoshop in that I can transmit this to Photoshop if I was connected to somebody running Photoshop. CS5. Right. Uh, it, you have to use the most recent version. I had to download it this morning. I transmitted this to Photoshop and voila, it should have just popped up. Oh man, so a lot, of people, a lot of people who saw the video demo for this, assuming that this would turn your iPad into a real-time easel, like a, a mm -hmm. tablet, yeah, Wacom tablet for Photoshop, that's not what this does. It's unclear to me whether you can, there's even an easy way to like grab stuff from the Photoshop workspace and bring it into here. That seems like like the most super obvious thing in the world to me for this type of app. Yeah. Doesn't seem like it's working. And I think this is actually a real watercolor model. Like if you have watercolors where you have the water bubbled up on top of the, the ink, mm -hmm. this is how it's gonna, on top of the paper, this is how it's gonna work. Um, so yeah, it, like I don't know if this is hyper useful. That's kind of for the artist to decide. It's relatively inexpensive. It's like two or three bucks. Will Smith, you are an artist at drawing blobs of color. Norman. Do you like lava? I have both a great respect and fear of lava. So Color Lava is a uh, swatch building tool. Huh. So, you know, you know when you, like artists, yes. capital A, uh, when they're building a palette for a Photoshop thing, then they'll, you know, smear out a bunch of paint and, or, or And they want to mix you know, the paint, mix, mix the, the paints, pigments as it were. And get, you know, the colors that you want. And of course this has like all the Swirls. swirling and blurring and all sorts of that kind of crazy like paint physics, I guess. And then what you can do is drag them over to, hold on. A save palette. Yeah, you can save the palette. So um, I'm going to select. That is a mustardy yellow. Yes. And now it is a Colonel bright mustard. red. I it's, made it's all pukey like colors here. Pukey green. Uh, there's a water thing. I don't know exactly what this, I guess it cleans your oh. brush for swirling. Uh, so you can swirl more effectively. Fake water, it's a neat effect. If you want to bring stuff in from your photos, like if you have a, if you took a picture of a classic car someplace okay. and you really want to get that in there, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, foolishly, Import. I did not. Um, Import the sunset. Sunset, perfect. Very, very artsy. Use it. I'm going to use that. I'm pressing use. Uh, right. And then I'm going to, oh wait, I can't zoom in, but I can tap. And as you see, I, as I move my finger, it smears it around more and picks up the appropriate color. Mm. Um, Capture that sun now, setting. Now, the interesting thing about this is, hold on, let me get one more palette so you can see what we're, we're dealing with here. 
there we go, black, okay. So what you can do here is, is save these palettes, you can give them names, and then, like the other apps, you can blast them over to Photoshop. So this is test Crusty Musty. Two. Okay, Crusty Musty, that's interesting. That, that, that's what these colors say to me. Crusty Musty, you're, okay. you're much more of an artist than me. We'll just go with Crust Musty. Um, and you can, hold on, how does this, I can never get this to work. Double tap the name. There we go. Uh, double tap the name. I can, again, connect to the Photoshop server, which is just Photoshop CS5 or later, and send it to Photoshop. And it'll show up in the swatches over And you also get the, the, uh, the hexadecimal values. Yeah, it, you can send it via email, too. If you send it via email, it gives you a giant-ass list of all the... It just make, it makes a sense of the picture and, like, the sample images that you use to get the palette. Adobe Nav is arguably the biggest release that came out today. It's kind of the most expensive. It's five or six bucks. Yep. Um, basically, what this is is a toolbox. Yeah, this looks like iPad. the uh, the uh, in Adobe Photoshop. This looks like all the shortcuts. This is the on little the tool tray. Left hand. Yeah. yeah, the thing that you can move around. I can't name what everything does. That's the pan. So tool, this is the grabber. Tool. Yes, uh, this is a selector. This is lasso. a lasso. Uh, this is a magic brush of some kind. Mm, that's cropping. Uh, yeah, the neat thing about this is if you like, I don't use all of these. I don't know what most of these are. I know like rubber stamp and crop, but you can add or remove any of the tools that you want mm. from this list. So if I use. I don't even know what a patch tool is, but I'm going to try that out. And I'm going to put that over here in this last 16th slot. So you can put 16 of the tools you use most frequently. For example, now I'm going to try the patch tool. Let's see what that does. I have no idea. Uh, I can change colors. Uh, you Swap colors. Now the thing you can't do is select different colors here, which seems a little bit weird. Okay. Like it seems like you should be able to hold this or tap it or do some sort of gesture or something and get into that palette swapper mm -hmm. from the from someplace else. Either that or pick swatches or whatever. You can't do that. Uh, you can change screen mode. So you can make it full screen, not full screen, part screen. You can uh, zoom in and out as you want. Uh, and then of course you can also see other open palettes in the background. So for example, here's something that we worked on in, uh, in an earlier earlier bit. The neat thing about this is it caches these images uh, on the iPad. So even if you're not connected to the to the Photoshop instance in, in question, you can still see all your you can thumbnails. Still, yeah, you can you can take the thumbnails, you can blow them up, you can see the information about them. Um, I'm trying to make it big, but it doesn't seem to be cooperating. Hold on, here we go. Oh, that's of course an un, that's nothing. Uh, but you can just do a two finger pinch and zoom, and you can like say if you're in a situation you need to take a proof to show somebody, you can just grab your iPad, take it yeah. from your desk, and you're and you're good to go. Very cool if you're using your iPad. You know, next to your desktop PC or an iMac uh, running CS5, of course, you can have more screen real estate for your actual art and keep the menus on the iPad. Now, the things you can't do are actually edit the images on this, on, of this, on the iPad, which, I, I mean, I don't know. If they can show you the previews, I kind of feel like you should be able to do a little bit of light touch-up or zoom and crop and stuff like that. But whatever. I mean, I think this is pretty cool. This is one of those future things I've been talking about for a while. I think it's, I think it's pretty exciting. I love to see devices working together without having to go up to the cloud and come back down. I think that's really awesome, and it is the future. Yep. But I think two of these apps, Easel and Color Lava, are very specific apps that not everyone are going to find useful. Nav is actually the only one I could see myself using on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, I mean, especially for people who are using like a tablet to draw, having the controls for the Nav stuff on the secondary screen, and that ability to quickly jump through images. Awesome. Really, really cool. I'm excited to see what else is coming on this front in the future. For Tested, I'm Will. I'm Norm. See you guys next time.